God to be taught with power. Power of the Holy Spirit. Power to heal. Power to bless. Power to protect in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us go through the word of God together tonight from the book of Romans chapter 13 verse number 12 the bible says that the night is nearly over the day is almost here so let us put aside the deeds of the darkness and put the armor of the light let us behave decently as in the daytime not in carousing drunkenness, not in sexual immorality, debauchery, not in dissensions and jealousy. Rather, close yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Accept the one whose face is weak without quarreling over dispute table matters one person faith allows them to eat anything another whose faith is weak eats vegetables the one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not and the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does. For God has accepted them. Who are you to judge someone else servant? To their own master a servant stand or fall. And they will stand for the Lord is able to to make them stand. Let us start very well from verse number 12. When the Bible says that the night is nearly over, the day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Hallelujah. Amen. We are the children of the light. Amen. It's something that we have to know. It's something that we have to understand that we are the children of the light. We are not the people or the children of darkness, but the children of the light. That's why the Word of God also says in the book of Matthew chapter 5, the Bible says that, verse number 14, you are the light of the world. A town built on the hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under the bowl. Instead, they put it on each stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Then the Bible says that let us put aside the deeds of darkness that means there is a deed of darkness and there is a deed of the light there is a things that when people do those things those things are of the kingdom of darkness and there are some also actions which are of the kingdom of the light Hallelujah. Amen. That means if you are the child of God, 
filled of the Holy Spirit, there are certain things that you can do as you are the child of the light, a person of the Holy Spirit. Which the Bible says that in the book of Galatians chapter 5, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And the Bible says that the Word of God also talks about the deeds of darkness. The deeds of darkness which the Bible says that we must put aside. The Bible says that these are like idolatry, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, decisions, factions, drunkenness, envy, orchids, and the like. Then the Bible is saying that everything which is not of God, which does not represent the light, we must put okay. it aside and allow Amen. the Holy Spirit to take over us. And once it has taken over us so that it may produce fruits of the Spirit mm. through us, so that Amen. Christ may be seen through us so that Jesus' likeness may be seen through us as we allow the Holy Spirit to take over us. And once Amen. that the Holy Spirit has taken over us, it can also be seen that you are the child of God. You are born again. You are saved as your light will be shining before others and as they see your, our good deeds and then they will glorify our Father Amen. in heaven. Amen. And the Bible says that in verse number 13 of Romans chapter 13, the Bible says that let us behave decently as in daytime you know then the bible say that let it be seen that you are the child of god let it be seen that you are born again as we behave decently and we try by all means to have self-control so that it can be seen that you are a child of god and that means the word of God is saying that there should be a difference between somebody who is born again and somebody who is not. You know, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the character of the Spirit of God, which we are talking about, which is the fruits of the Holy Spirit, somebody must just be able to look at you and say that, no, there is something with this woman of God. There is something about this man of God. There is something about this child of God. Amen. When they are seeing the salt in you, when they are seeing the signs that you are the child of God, as we are behaving decently, but as the Bible says, let us behave decently as in the daytime. Not carousing in drunkenness, not going like, oh, people cannot see me. Then therefore, when people cannot see you, you can even try to drink. But whether people see you or nobody see you as a child of God, you must maintain your composure. You must maintain your composure as if God is seeing you. Because one Amen. thing, you know, 
yes you may find that people doesn't see us people does not see you but god always is with you and god sees us always and the bible said that we must behave decently whether it's during the night time or during the day time it must be the same whether it is where people see us or not we must behave the same as we are maintaining our composure as a children of God living as if we are living for God living the life that glorify God living the life that God can be proud of in public and in secret the bible says that not in carousing and in drunkenness not in sexual immorality not in debauchery not in dissensions not in jealousy children of god we can be able to do this only when the holy ghost has taken over us and is helping us to live the life that we are supposed to live as a children of god not by ourselves then there because the secret of living a christian life the secret of living the the christian life it's when we surrender and once we have surrendered to the holy spirit and allow the holy spirit to take over us and help us to live the life in which we are supposed to live because the holy Amen. spirit have come into this world to help you to be the child of God. Amen. Have come to help us to be a Christian. And is the Amen. one who is able to produce Christians. Is the one who is able to to you know to produce Christians uh without him there are no Christians. And it's very very much important to understand that without the Holy Spirit they are no Christians. Christians you know what we call Christians are the results of Christ and Christ is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. When you talk about Christ, yes, Jesus Christ is called Christ. Amen. But when you say Christ, which means anointed one with his anointing, and the anointing is the anointing of the Holy Spirit and Christ. Through the Holy Spirit he produces Christians. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And when somebody wonder how can I do it yes it is possible the holy ghost is here to help us to live as the children of god representing god living for god during the day during the night in public and in secret the bible says that in the book of romans chapter 13 verse number 14 Rather clothe yourself with the, the Lord Jesus Christ. Clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ. That means allow the Holy Ghost to take over you. Allow the Holy Ghost because the Jesus Christ can we can can only be able to take over us to close us through the holy spirit allow the holy spirit to take over you allow him and 
and allow the word of God to take over us. Once the Holy Ghost has taken over us and the word of God has taken over us, not just, okay, I have listened to the word of God and did not do what the word of God talks about. This kind we are talking about having listened to what the word of God says and having put that word of God into practice, then you have closed yourself with Christ. And do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. The word of God is revealing to, to us that there is what is so it's called the desires of the flesh. That's what we were reading about in the book of Galatians. Your flesh, our flesh have got desires. Hallelujah. Amen. Which is contrary to what the Spirit wants. Which is contrary to what the Holy Ghost wants. But the Bible says that. Do not think about how to gratify the desires of your flesh. Amen. Otherwise, when you're having those thoughts to gratify the desires of your flesh, the Bible says that we must resist the devil and the devil will flee from us. But do not think about gratifying the desires of our flesh. Otherwise, Amen. if we allow ourselves to be tempted and to think about gratifying the, devour, the desires of our flesh, we will be doing the deeds of darkness which the word of God is telling us not to Amen. hallelujah Amen. the Bible says that in the book of 1st Corinthians chapter 9 verse number 27 no I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after when I have preached to others I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. This is Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul is telling us how he does it, how he do it. How he keep Amen. his flesh under subjection. How he make sure that he does not gratify the desires of his flesh. And he say that how he say that I strike a blow to my body, I beat my body. You know, some of the people when they're trying to to crucify the flesh, they fast so that the flesh may not be active because you know, I want to tell you this. One thing that we have to always know and always remember is that we are, you are a spirit. And when we are a spirit, and you, when you are a spirit, you live in a body. And you've got a soul, and you've got a mind. But your spirit is the one which is born again. Amen. Your spirit is born again. But your body yeah. is not born again. Your, our yeah. bodies are not saved. Our bodies are not saved. Our bodies yeah. still love the things of the world. Then yeah. if you can allow your flesh to have what it wants, there won't be any difference between us who are saved and those who are not. There won't be any difference because your body is not born again. 
Amen. But our spirits are the ones who are joined with Christ. Are the one your spirit is the one which is born again, is the one which is saved. Then in order to live a Christian life, what needs to happen is that we need to crucify our flesh. We need to crucify our flesh. Amen. We need to kill our body. And after that, allowing the Holy Spirit to have mastery over our body. Allowing the Amen. Holy Spirit to have our spirit and the Holy Spirit to have mastery of our body so that we may not gratify the desires of the flesh but Amen. do the will of God because you can only do the will of God when you are allowing the Holy Spirit and which is who is joined with your spirit to lead you, not your flesh. You know, the difference between somebody who's born again and somebody who's not is because their flesh have got mastery over them. When the flesh have got mastery over them, of course, they do. They live a, a worldly life because the flesh want the things of the world. But the difference between somebody who's born again and somebody who's not is that when you are born again, you ought to crucify your flesh and allow the Holy Spirit to have mastery over your body and let the Spirit of God lead and you follow. Because the Holy Spirit wants the things of God. He enjoys the things of God and if you allow Him to take over, then you will be able to do what God wants us to do. Otherwise, if you don't do so, they will be wondering, this one says that he's born again. This one says that he's born again. But why is he or she talking like the people of the world? Acting like the people of the world? Sometimes it's because they have not crucified their flesh. They've allowed Amen. their flesh to have a mastery, must mystery, mastery. Whereas, no, we have Amen. to be led by the Spirit, not by your flesh. You must be led by the Spirit. And part of it, it Amen. will take for you to crucify your flesh. That's what the Word of God says that we must do. We need to crucify it crucify your flesh. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Galatians chapter 5 verse number 24 says that those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Those who belong to Jesus Christ have crucified the flesh. That means when the flesh Man. says, do this, they don't. I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. They are Man. able to do what the spirit says that they must do, and the flesh says that, no, it's time to eat now. Eat. So, no, it's, I'm not going to eat. It's my time to fast. Because the spirit wants you Man. to fast. The flesh wants you to eat. When the flesh says sleep now, it's time to sleep. And you go like, no, I'm going to wake up and pray. Ah, it's my time to pray because the Holy Spirit wants you to pray. The Bible talks about one day Jesus Christ took his disciples. Took his disciples to pray. And he says that, you know, you must be left here. I want to go yonder. I want to go and pray. The Bible said that he went there and he prayed. When he come back to his disciples, he found them sleeping. As he found them sleeping, he said, Can't you wait with me just for an hour? Amen. What did they say? They said that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. 
Amen. The spirit want to pray. The flesh want to sleep. The flesh Amen. says that it is tired. But you know, as a children of God, we are spiritual being, and Christianity is a spiritual walk, and we need Amen. to surrender to the Holy Spirit. And allow the Holy Spirit to take over us so that we can become successful Christians. Amen. When you're talking about successful Christian, I'm not talking about successful Christian of the things of this world. I'm talking about successful Christians of spiritual things who are successful Amen. in living their Christian life. Amen. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to take over us. We have to allow the Holy Amen. Spirit to lead us. Amen. Because the Holy Spirit loves, enjoys the spiritual things and heavenly things. But the flesh, because one day the flesh knows, one day is going to die. One day is going to be buried. One day the maggots gonna eat and it's going to be no more. Then the flesh it want to enjoy the things of this world now because it knows that the time the days are numbered. And the flesh want to enjoy now. But the spirit, it knows, the spirit knows, himself he knows that okay, this life, the time that we are living in this world, in this body, it's a short time. It's a short time and this life is not it. And it knows that Jesus Christ have said in the book of John chapter 3 verse number 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever will believe upon him shall be saved and have everlasting life everlasting life in Christ and everlasting life and eternal life in heaven then the holy the spirit our spirit which is born again a recreated spirit looking for that day when he's going to be in the presence of the Lord and he knows that okay this life need to be lived in preparation for the next because this life it is just a qualifier of the life to ne- to, of the ne- next coming life then the Holy Spirit does not just want to enjoy now and our spirit doesn't want to enjoy now Your spirit want to make it to heaven. Our spirit want to find itself in the presence of God. Because that's when he knows that, that's when you could say that you have made it. But yet, our flesh, our flesh want to enjoy now. Then every day, there is the war between your body and your flesh. Spirit, your spirit to join with the Holy Spirit is the one who will tell you now is the time for the service. And the flesh is telling you, no, you can be doing this, you can be doing that. No, man, it's your time. It's time to fast, man. Is the spirit telling you? Fast, please. Sometimes the, your flesh will be telling you about the sins of this world. Oh, you can do this sin now. It's a nice scene. Your spirit will say, No, man, don't do it. Don't do it. You do it. You are preparing yourself to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. I want to be in the presence of God. That's the spirit talking. But the flesh says, No, no. Why wait? I, it's time for us to go and pray, asking God, the Holy Spirit, to take over us, helping, 
asking God to help us to crucify the flesh and to surrender to the Holy Spirit that we can be led by the Holy Spirit so that one day we may find ourselves in the presence of the Lord in heaven forever wherever you are begin to pray Christ. 
You are my Lord. You are my Savior. Wash me with your blood. Forgive me my sins. Bless me today. Protect me from today. Protect me from today. From today. I am born again. I am saved. Say may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us all. Surely goodness and love. Shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord in the name of Jesus. We are continue to pray. We are continue to fast. We are continuing to plant a seed, and I want to say to us tonight, may God bless you. Have a blessed and a wonderful night in Jesus' name. Bye bye, everybody. Have a blessed morning, day, and afternoon. Amen. Bye bye. Bye.